A report on Sri Lanka's status must be presented by September 2022. By that time, they intend to mobilize the external mechanism. The UN High Commissioner says she is in possession of more than 120,000 files. We can observe several facts at this juncture. One is. It is our opinion that the Human Rights Commission has not been granted such sweeping powers by the UN. Also, at a time Sri Lanka's internal mechanism is functioning smoothly, such an external mechanism will not bring forth any results. We believe the funds invested and efforts exhausted on creating such a mechanism will prove futile. What we are attempting to highlight is that we will take all possible measures to ensure Sri Lanka society continues to progress. Hence, such an external mechanism is not required. Fifteen nations spoke on behalf of Sri Lanka and called for support to be extended for the program carried out by the Sri Lankan government. Three nations spoke on behalf of the nation they represent and reprimanded external influence. That is an act which goes beyond the United Nations Charter. Unfortunately, four countries spoke against us. They believe we must seek international assistance to resolve internal conflicts. <laughs> Did the April 21st attacks figure at the UNHRC sessions? We did not issue a special comment on that matter in Geneva. However, the United Nations High Commissioner's report mentions that religious leaders expect the authorities to bring its perpetrators before the law and be punished. In the same speech, she calls for the release of certain people who are incarcerated. So we can see two separate opinions being put forward by the same people who are opposing us. One fact is, indictments have been filed against 26 people already. Three Supreme Court judges have been appointed to hear the case daily from the 4th of October. Although there is widespread belief that certain individuals mentioned in the Presidential Commission report must be indicted, it cannot be done since the Commission report is not a legal document.